and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to a video that is definitely a review, but perhaps contains certain elements of an epic dial typo style video about it as well. Perhaps I need to start a new series, The World's Worst Sales Listings. This is a video about the Red Star Bullhead Chronograph. Now, I have featured the watch on the channel before. I included it sight unseen in my top 10 AliExpress mid-year sale recommendations video, and indeed, I bought one. I mentioned at the time that the sales listing was a sight to behold and more proof, if ever it was needed, that sometimes Google Translate just isn't enough. What drew me to the watch in the first place was not the dodgy listing, but the fact that this style of watch is a real unicorn. I think I have reviewed two bullhead chronographs in five years, one by Stratton and one by Citizen. And yet here was one right under my nose on AliExpress for a good price and with a mechanical movement in it, hence why I bought one. So it certainly has a lot of on paper appeal, assuming you like this style of watch that is, but will that translate to on wrist appeal and just how bad is the listing? Let's flip the camera and find out. Let's have a look at this listing then and see what's so bad about it. I mean, it starts off sensibly enough with some nice renders of the watch with pictures of a bull's head in the background. Super new arrival, Red Star Bullhead original design. I'll even let them off with their second image. Bullhead original design, perfect display. Okay. It begins to go astray though from the third screen onwards. Breakthrough conventional, show personality, wrist fashion, open from here? Not sure about that last one, to be honest. And by the fourth image, it's pretty much all over. Bullhead craft show. The crown is apparently on the head of the bull and is sparkling, and the buttons are horn-shaped, full of strength and courage, but also apparently more calm. And as a bonus, the whole cylinder is semi-hidden. And by the fifth image, we have descended into gibberish. Cowhead facial skeleton is today's headline, but frankly, I'm more concerned about how they've managed to CNC machine a heterosexual case using 16 precision cutting processes. That sounds terrifying. And if cowhead facial skeleton and heterosexual case weren't enough for you, apparently this watch features word nails. And not just any word nails, but luminous word nails. I mean, it's still better than my Chinese, but for goodness sakes, pay someone to proofread your listing, preferably someone who speaks the same language as the people you're trying to sell the watch to. But I guess some idiots will still buy it anyway. Indeed, they will. Let's start with the packaging. Red Star, I believe, are the Hong Kong-based company that manufactures the majority of the watches that we know as the Seagull 1963. So if you have bought a 63 recently, chances are it came in one of these little silver tins. Now, I bought this brown one back in July, and I thought I'd paid for the one on the leather strap. So it was a bit of a bonus when it arrived with the leather and the bracelet. It looks like the price has actually gone down since I ordered mine. I paid 260 plus dollars, as you can see. They are now 250-ish from the same store with vouchers available. You should be able to get that price closer to $230, I think. Of course, I will leave a link in the description of the video. Apparently, if you look at the listing, if you order it on the leather strap, they give you the bracelet as a gift. And if you order it on the bracelet, they give you the leather strap as a gift. All watches are exactly the same price. Maybe it's the same person who's responsible for their copy as for their sales strategy. It certainly seems that way. Of course, you don't have to buy it from AliExpress. Market Long Island stocks these, but you will pay a bit more. His current price is 315. But even for that money, I think you're still getting something really interesting. As discussed, bull heads are rare, and this one looks glorious. It's mechanical as opposed to mecha quartz. It features a Seagull ST1901 column wheel chronograph, and it features a swan neck adjustment lever. This is the first Seagull that I've seen with that extra fine tuning lever on it, ideal for the tinkerers amongst us. And because it's a bull head, the two chronograph subdials shift around 90 degrees from 9 and 3 to 12 and 6. So it's a very unusual dual register layout. The 30 minute chrono is at the 12 and the small second is at the 6. Some of the colours like this brown are super retro, but there's a blue which is a little less achingly retro looking at least. It is quite thick, but it wears really nicely thanks to the aforementioned cowhead facial skeleton. 
Let's look at the vital statistics then. It's 42 millimeters in diameter, but it wears really nice as you'll see. Thickness is 14.3 mil around the middle. Now the watch measures 45 mil end to end, which is very compact, but the lugs are set a little inboard even of that. Lug width is 18 millimeters, but as you'll see, there's a bit of flair on both the bracelet and the leather. So it looks like a 20 or even a 21. Sized up for me on the bracelet, it weighs in at 140 grams or 95 if you for the leather. The case is well finished, there's a fine horizontal brush to the mid case, so fine it sometimes looks like it's actually polished. That is until you look at the actually polished upper surface, which is really shiny. There's also a nice little high polish undercut to the case. This makes a fairly chunky case, both look slimmer on wrist and also wear nice and comfortably. The crown does indeed sparkle and it has that red star logo on it. The two chrono pushers are also indeed relatively discreet, but not to the extent they make this watch hard to use. The bezel insert is anodized aluminium with a loom pip. Now the glass is just mineral, but it's very nicely domed and features plenty of purpley blue anti-reflective undercoating, as I'm sure you have already spotted. Now there's a reason why I didn't order the watch on a bracelet, and that's because I thought the bracelet looked rubbish. Not rubbish visually, but rubbish quality wise. Well, I was half wrong and half right. It's definitely a bit of a weird one. I've never seen a three link Jubilee before. As such, there is an enormous amount of flex. Those little flared ends are also a touch sharp and the clasp is actually rubbish. Super cheap, pressed upper, pressed lower. Easily replaced though for about $8 if you are so inclined. I'll leave a link to this AliExpress clasp in the description of the video as well. Yeah, so I'm glad I didn't specifically order this one on the bracelet, but if I'm getting it for the same price as the leather, I'm not gonna complain too much. And the leather strap is actually quite nice. Red Star branded, it's embossed, so it's got a fair amount of padding to it. It's quick release, and as discussed, it flares out slightly, so it doesn't look like you're wearing an 18 mil strap on wrist. Having said that, I will put it on an 18 mil strap a bit later in the video. The buckle is massive though, I'm not a fan of this Panerai style. But again, it's an easy swap for something lying around in a box. I did that as well. And finally, before we have another look at the front, let's have a look at the back. This should probably be familiar to most of you by now. It's the Seagull ST1901. It's the only affordable mechanical chronograph movement on the market. And it's affordable because it's a Chinese made version of a Swiss movement that debuted in the 1940s, seriously. I think they've probably got their value out of the tooling for this one by now. 17 joules, manual wind, non-hacking, power reserve somewhere in the high 30s. If you run the chrono though, that reduces to the low 30s. It's a fascinating movement to look at, providing you don't look that closely. The blue swan neck gooseneck thing should make timing adjustments less of a lottery, though how many owners will actually be bothered to take the display case back off to do that? I'm honestly not sure. It's not that practical as a daily after all. It looks like they're individually numbering watches as well though. Again, like the Swan Neck, a nice touch for not a lot of cash. But check out that dial, I love it. The color is fantastic. It has a nice and strong sunburst effect. And the recessed square indices, the sub-registers, add yet another texture. There's a vertical brush metallic finish in gold on this brown model to complement that brown. The indices, sorry, word nails, are applied with a loom center section and high polished silver edges. Fence post hands are nice and simple, but a very good length. The minute hand is both slimmer and much longer than the hour hand, so it's very easy to differentiate them at a glance. The orange central chronograph hand keeps the 70s color palette rolling, and the red star logo offset to the nine is fairly inoffensive. It's a pretty basic stencil style font they've used for the brand name though, perhaps not quite as interesting as it might have been but it looks really dynamic on the move this one with multiple textures and with the dome crystal with anti-reflective. The AR is ever present though, so you're gonna have to get on board with heaps and heaps and heaps of light play with this one. So the loom then, they proudly told us in the listing that the word nails were luminous and indeed they are. There is also some loom on the two most important hands and all of the hour markers. Sadly, when I turn the speed up, it's the hands that fade first, which is not really ideal, is it? By the end of the 20 minutes, they have vanished entirely, leaving only the indices. Perhaps they shouldn't have been so boastful about their luminous word nails. Who cares about loom though, when it looks this good on wrist? That funny Jubilee is very bendy, but very comfortable as a consequence, and the high polished center links of the bracelet add yet another element to the light show. 
It's thicker at the horn end, if you will, than the chin end, but it curves to my seven inch wrist nicely. And those hidden lugs means it probably wears more akin to a 40 than it does to a 42. I'll probably still be wearing it on the leather most of the time though. I tend to wear chronographs on leather for some reason, and this strap is actually very nice. The buckle though, as noted, is enormous. I'm sure it would be scratched up pretty quickly because it's all high polished. Not a problem for me though now, as I'll leave it on this more compact buckle and tang arrangement from here on in. But I said the lugs were 18 mil. I think it looks just as good, if not better, on a slightly slimmer strap. This one perhaps doesn't quite match tonally, but I've got a few others I can play around with in due course. Moans and niggles then. Well, there is probably a reason why bullhead chronographs are rare, and that's because they are a little bit odd, let's be honest. They aren't nearly as intuitive and therefore not nearly as practical to use as a standard chronograph with the pushers at two and four. But I didn't buy this one to use the chronograph function. I bought it because I think it looks cool. The crystal is nice, but it's only mineral, and there is a lot of AR, so you're gonna have to be okay with that. There are serious limits to the usefulness of the application of loom, and 30 meters of water resistance means no splishy splashy for this one. Neither the bracelet nor the leather strap are perfect. The strap buckle is too big, and the bracelet clasp is poor. It's nice to have options, I guess, and nothing that can't be fixed by the end user as you saw, but in some ways I would rather they gave us one good one instead of two slightly compromised options. And the seagull movement is fun to look at and it's a veritable antique, but then they do have a higher failure rate than a lot of other mechanical movements, perhaps as a consequence of age. I've had a few and they've all been fine, but I buy so many of these things, I'm sure I'm gonna end up with a rogue one at some point. So this watch then is not without its downsides, but for me anyway, there's nothing major on that list nothing major at all. Overall though, this is one heterosexual cow skeleton that has exceeded my expectations. I do love retro chronographs though, as you can see here from just a few of the retro chronographs in my current collection. I think you could refine that a little further and say that I like brown retro chronographs, so perhaps it's no surprise that I'm into this one. Sure, the 1963 is cheaper whilst featuring exactly the same movement, minus the swan neck I suppose, and it has the option of sapphire. The Stratton is more practical with much better loom, a much better bracelet, and a better level of water resistance. But at the end of the day, the Red Star is more than charming enough to earn a space in one of my many, many watch boxes. So there you have it. Most of that listing may have been lost in translation, but if you like bullhead chronographs, this one is definitely worth a look. Let's face it, you don't really have many options, do you? If you like bullhead chronographs, but this one didn't float your boat, why not check out the only other two that I have reviewed, the first by Stratton, the second by Citizen. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you all again in a future video.